Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Streamlined. Today we will look into a very interesting fluid property known as viscosity which is essential when studying fluid flow in any application. If you take three glass jars, one filled with honey, second with water and third with vegetable oil and drop a steel ball into the jars, you will observe that the ball reaches the bottom fastest in water, then in oil and at last in honey. This is due to a property that represents the internal resistance of a fluid to motion and that property is known as viscosity. So let's understand in detail what viscosity is. Consider a fluid flowing over a flat plate. We can assume that the fluid is flowing in layers with each layer flowing at a different velocity because fluid close to the plate surface will be subjected to friction from the surface which decreases the velocity of that fluid layer. This is known as wall effect. As we move away from the plate surface, the friction effect will decrease and will be the least at the top layer of the fluid. Since the fluid layers are moving at a different velocity, a shear stress develops between them. This is similar to the friction force generated between two solid objects in contact and sliding relative to one another. This shear stress is dominant near the plate surface because the fluid's particles close to the plate stick on its surface and their velocity becomes zero since the plate is fixed and this condition is known as no slip condition. Let's take a fluid element close to the plate. Here AB shows the bottom layer of the fluid element which assumes the velocity of the plate that is zero because of no slip condition and CD as the top layer which is at some velocity greater than zero. Since the upper layer of the fluid element moves faster than the lower layer in a differential time interval dt, the fluid element will deform by differential angle d beta which can be written as d beta equal to tan beta equal to cc dash by bc dash. The distance traveled by the upper layer cc dash can be written as du into dt where du is the velocity of the upper layer. bc dash is the vertical height of the fluid element given by dy. So further we can write d beta by dt is equal to du by dy. From this equation we can conclude that the rate of deformation of a fluid element is equivalent to the velocity gradient du by dy. The shear stress between the fluid layers will make the fluid velocity profile look like this. The magnitude of the shear stress between the layers will be linked to the slope of the velocity profile du by dy where u is the fluid velocity and y is the vertical distance from the plate surface. This slope is sharp near the plate surface as the fluid velocity is changing very suddenly. So here the shear stress between the fluid layers is very large. But far from the plate surface, the slope is less as fluid velocity is not changing much, causing low shear stress between the fluid layers. In most fluids, the shear stress is directly proportional to the velocity gradient, and the constant of proportionality between them is known as coefficient of viscosity or dynamic viscosity. This equation is known as Newton's law of viscosity. The fluids for which the rate of deformation is proportional to the shear stress are called Newtonian fluids after Sir Isaac Newton who expressed it first in 1687. Most fluids such as water, air, gasoline are Newtonian fluids. Dynamic viscosity has units of kg per meter second or Newton second per meter square. A common viscosity unit is poise which is equivalent to 0.1 Newton second per meter square. The viscosity of water at 20 degrees Celsius is 1 centipoise and thus the unit of centipoise serves as a useful reference. Another quantity which appears frequently in fluid mechanics and heat transfer is the ratio of dynamic viscosity to density. This ratio is known as kinematic viscosity. 
Kinematic viscosity is a measure of fluid's internal resistance to flow under gravitational forces. It has units of meter square per second and stoke. One stoke is equal to one centimeter square per second. When should you use dynamic viscosity measurements? The measurement of dynamic viscosity is most useful for liquids which change their viscosity under some force or pressure. These liquids are known as non-Newtonian fluids. Let's understand by an example of ketchup. This product needs to have a lower viscosity as it flows to get it out of the bottle. But it needs to be thick when sitting on a burger or sandwich. Testing the viscosity of ketchup at different speeds and the force applied will ensure that the ketchup is behaving as it should be. So for this we need to measure the dynamic viscosity of the ketchup. Now let's see when to use the kinematic viscosity measurements. This is mostly done for Newtonian liquids which do not change their viscosity under some applied force. For example lubricating oils. So in case of lubricating oils, we need to determine the kinematic viscosity because the oil is working at different temperatures and under different environmental conditions. So when you need to determine the viscosity characteristics of a liquid which is not exposed to outside forces other than gravity, kinematic viscosity should be the method of choice. Let's understand the effect of temperature on viscosity of liquids and gases. In liquid, the viscosity is mainly due to the cohesive forces between the molecules. But when you increase the temperature of a liquid, the molecules of the liquid possess more energy and they can oppose the large cohesive intermolecular forces more strongly. So therefore, in liquids, viscosity decreases with increasing in temperature. Also, the energized molecules can now move more freely and away from each other that causes the viscosity of the liquids to decrease. In gases, the viscosity is mainly due to the molecular collisions. As we know, the intermolecular forces in gases are negligible so on increasing temperature the gas molecules gain more energy and move randomly at higher velocities this results in more molecular collisions per volume per unit time and therefore causes increase in the resistance to flow thereby increasing the viscosity i hope you like this explanation kindly like and subscribe and keep looking for more videos